first time I came to Woods Hole was in the late 40s, and I stayed with my aunt and uncle out at the end of Juniper Point, which was a very nice place to stay. Uh, and I went to science school for a couple years. My aunt and uncle had three boys, and they wanted daughters, so they invited my sister and, my, and myself to spend the summers with them. I must have been oh, 11 or 12, and we, I probably stayed until I was 16 or so, every summer, so yeah. maybe four summers. We did a lot of swimming, sailing, though I never learned to sail. I enjoyed going out in boats. And they always had square dances at their house, and that was fun. And I remember going to the Woods Hole Yacht Club balls, and they were very formal. You had to wear a long dress. And my sister had terrible poison ivy, so she wore long white gloves. She looked very elegant. Um, and I remember just hanging out, enjoying hurricanes. We, there were two really good hurricanes while we were there. And it's, I think before they were, I think one was Carol and one was before that, I'm not sure it was named. There, there was no warning either. There's just this huge wind and the, the tower beside the lighthouse had hurricane flags on it, so you knew it was a hurricane. They don't do that anymore. And all of the end of Juniper Point became an island because the storm surge covered the, the, ro the road, and we hung on to each other and waded across. We were probably crazy to do it, but it was wonderful. We went down into Woods Hole, and at, at the Woods Hole Market, which was then called Six Sicknesses, owned by Mr. Sickness, spelled with T-S-I-N, I can't remember how to spell it, but it was an uh, Eastern European name. The water went in one door, mixed with all the soap powder, and came out in the other direction full of bubbles. <laughs> and most of Woods Hole, the main street, was underwater. It was wild. My first job at NBL was as a chambermaid, and I chambermaided in the brick dorm. And it was a very nice job because we worked from 8 in the morning till 12 noon, and we had the rest of the day off. And I made $100 for the summer, <laughs> which I thought was a lot of money. <laughs> I think I just like biology. I, and I think it started out with my interest in, in insects. And when I was in high school, I loved the biology course. When I was in college, I took a lot of biology. I loved parasitology. I loved all those complicated life cycles that are so, so impossible. You wouldn't think they'd be able to work, but they do. And they're, they're so intricate. And I loved that part of it. When I took biology in college, it's so different than bio general biology nowadays. We had no molecular bi biology. We didn't know about DNA then. And so it was, I think, simpler and more down to earth, if you could say that. And then I found out about this school for medical illustration and decided that be a good idea. Uh, in, the, in those days, they didn't have any schools for biological illustration. It was all medical illustration. I think when I was a teenager and gra just graduating from college, my mother expected me get, to get married and have babies and not have a career. The careers for women were much less usual then. Um, so I think being a biological illustrator was a nice career for me and I could be married and have children and it, they, they worked well together. But, and so I wasn't encouraged. 
I, I just wanted to do it. I went to graduate school at, at uh, Mass General Hospital School of Medical Illustration. And that's when I got a job with Phil Armstrong after, I, I think in 1957 when I was still a student until I graduated in 1961, 1960. Because my uncle knew Phil Armstrong and Phil Armstrong wanted to have a normal series of these developing fish embryos done. He was working on the behavior of the fish and how it coincided with the de development of the various organs in the fish. How, when the heart started beating, when circulation started happening, the fish would behave in certain ways. So he wanted a normal series. The first one I did was on um, catfish. Ictolorus nebulosus. And the second one was on fungulus, which killifish. And there was a normal series, but it was photographs. And the, the egg or the chorion the, around the fish embryo has a lot of oil droplets in it to make it float in the right way. And you had to move the, the um, egg around so the oil droplets weren't in the way of the fish. And a camera can't do that, but I could do it. So I could get better drawings than the camera could get photographs. When I did it, the, um, the first day I had to work, so I didn't lose any stages, I had to work to make a drawing every half hour for 24 hours. And then for the, then every hour, for 48 hours, then every two hours for, I don't remember how many days, but after a while I only had to do one drawing a day, but by then the fish was big and a lot more complicated, so it took time. So Dr. Armstrong gave me a great big alarm clock to keep in the lab so I wouldn't miss a stage. It was wonderful. Because I was 20, well, I guess I was 21 when I started, and there were a lot of young people around. Uh, so it, it was a very nice social experience. And a few of the guys who were either postdocs or graduate students in, in the various labs would get together, sit under, it's a tree in front of row, locust tree, I think. We'd, it was called the martini tree. And we'd get lab alcohol and flavor it with juniper berries and make martinis. And it was the thing to do, but after a while the lab ca caught on. And because we were using lab alcohol, which was not taxed by Massachusetts, it, turned out they didn't think that was a good idea, so we had to stop. But a whole gang of people did that. Um, also, I met my husband here. He was from the University of Chicago, and he had the lab next door. We started in Lilly, downstairs, in the, the first lab on that side. He, he kept very odd hours since I was up all night he would bring me snacks at 2 a.m. or so, something like that. So I met him in, I think, in 1958, and we got married in 1960. I guess that was when I first started working for Phil Armstrong. His wife, Louise, wanted to have a book plate done for the library, and they, did, they had a photograph of the seal but they didn't have a drawing. So she asked me to do the drawing of the seal. The, an architect's assistant did the drawing over the front door and nobody seems to know. And he designed it and nobody seems to know who that is. She said it was just for a book plate, so that didn't seem anything too momentous. And, and I never knew it was gonna be on every car and 
stationary and all of that. So it didn't seem like a big deal. Well, it was Albert St. Georgie and George Wald were both here. Oh, uh, Jim Watson. I went out on dates with Jim Watson, <laughs> too. I remember once we walked out on Penzance and wandered through people's gardens, which you're not supposed to do. <laughs> and this was before he won the Nobel Prize, but he had already um, discovered the double helix. Oh, I remember um, when, when they landed on the moon, two, two things. We didn't have a television set, so we couldn't watch it, but our neighbor had a television set. And when they landed on the moon, she, I, we live on a little circular road, and there are about 10 houses. She invited the whole neighborhood to come watch. She invited us to come watch the moon landing, and she invited us to come watch Nixon resign. So those were two big events. I decided that it would, biological, I taught biological illustration, that that would be a wonderful course for science school, especially for kids who weren't so deeply into science but wanted to go to science school and would be interested in this. So I started out with botanical drawing and we started out with seaweeds and then daylilies and then we went to zoological drawing and we started with periphera and worked our way up the, the evolutionary tree to to um, echinoderms. We never did man, got into vertebrates. So we did uh, sponges, we did salenterates, or nideria, we did uh, mollusks, we didn't do any of the worms, um, we did arthropods and echinoderms. And while I w when I was a child I loved insects, so I had a big collection of insects which I'd saved and I used them for kids to draw from in science school. I still have them. But I've, I started collecting when I was about seven, and I stopped when I was about 60. Well, teaching of, at science school was a very rewarding. I taught there for 17 years. That was very rewarding. It was lots of fun. I think Woods Hole is such a wonderful place. I think it's a very accommodating town. Anybody coming here will find a niche. People, people really love Woods Hole. I think it has a dynamism that most towns don't have. It has a real community. And I think whether you're just summer people not involved in the lab or involved in the labs feel that. That's vibrant, don't you think?